In today's episode of Help I Sex With My Boss, there's just days to go until the release of our book. I've been knocked up by a neighbour. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> and my parents have basically disgraced themselves in the neighbourhood already. Darlings, we have. We've had too much champagne. If you like this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe and watch new episodes on Wednesdays and Fridays. With a luxury touch. Oh! Can we swap sides again? Why? Because I want to go at that end of the table. Because for last week's Halloween episode, yes. I was you, you was me. Yes. And um, the, the videos that went up on social media, that's definitely my better side. Really? Yeah. But I think you look gorgeous that way. Yeah, but I look extra gorgeous that way. Okay, fine. No. Can we not? <laughs> Denied. Why? Because it's always been this way. But you've got two bad sides, so what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. And you've got two faces. Yeah, I have. More than the town clock. Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss. The podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life. Answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, is it possible to erase the image of William dressing up as me for Halloween? No. Weirdly was slightly <laughs> turned on by it. And how do we contain our excitement for the Help I Sexted My Boss book coming out this week? Yes. And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not your usual agony ants, are we? William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert. No, we're not, Jordan North, radio presenter. I'm more highbrow, you're more monobrow. And that's from Fiona, which is cutting. I, you know what I ever share you every week? Yeah. I do shave my monobrow. Do you have a monobrow? Yeah, and it's to the point now where my monobrow gets a bit of stubble. You could light a match on my monobrow. Okay. Mm. Should we do that for a bonus? Yeah, we could do. That yeah. could be a good viral TikTok clip. Don't try that at home. Um, right, should we um, pour some gin and de bonnet? I think you should. You've got the shakes. Look at you. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Look, we've got actual ice today. Oh. Because um, one of us was running late, we had time. That has not been kept in the fridge, can I just say? I can tell that from the colour. Oh. Oh, Adam. Oh, oh, Adam's got a turned on me now. Okay, sorry. We, we, We've got this little thing because Adam is the nicest bloke you'll ever meet. But yesterday, he, last week, he snapped at me. So we're now going to call him Miss Trunchable. It was in the fridge. How dare you? It just looks a darker colour than it normally is, Adam. But maybe it's just... Don't an argue with Miss Trunchable. No, Miss, when, it's Miss Trunchball. Miss Trunchball? Yes. You're, it, she'll let you in the chokey. <laughs> <laughs> is that a promise? Mm. Right, you, that's yours. Uh, let's toast. Do you want to make any more mess with that? No, I'm sorry. And also, just cheers for getting a dig in that I'm late. Yes, I was late. I had an outfit change last minute. <laughs> I just love that. You had a lot of outfit crisis. I, 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 would have been, I would have been 10 minutes early, mm. and then I left and caught my reflection and just went, no, <laughs> it won't, this won't do. What were you in? I was in that black jumper that I wear all the time. I thought there's so many videos of me in that one. Yeah. My aunt and deck one. Oh, yes. But they got me. Oh, yeah. That's but you like to remind everyone. <laughs> anyway, well, let's toast everyone uh, to... You might have more followers than me, but you didn't get a jumper off on Oh, you've noticed, have you? <laughs> 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 we were waiting for that. Um, I'm not bothered. No, 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 I know not. A few people text me going, has Jordan noticed yet? Like, no, I'm not going to tell him. When was it? When When did I overtake yeah. you? Weeks ago. Oh, was it? Yeah. I'm not bothered. No, you're not bothered. Um, let's toast... I'm not. Let's toast everyone who has bought the book so far with only two days to go until our big release. Everyone who's bought the book. Cheers. This is for you. You twat. <laughs> Don't say that. It sounds like you're calling them a twat. No, I'm calling you a twat. I know. Oh, I know that, but it sounds like... Sorry. I'm actually not bothered. Fair play to you. Well, fair play to Viral Freddy, really. Yeah. It's really him. As always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram. That's at sexandmyboss. Or you can write to William, who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards with executive self-seal envelopes. The address for that is on the website. It's sexandmyboss.com. So talk me through your look today. Because you wore that yesterday and I said to you yesterday, I feel like you should have a husky at your side. A husky? Yes. <laughs> it's just a... It's a, it's a jacket with a little... Is it a shacket? It's a, yeah, it's a shacket with a little fur collar. Faux? Faux. It's not real fur. God. No. God, no, no, let's not open that can of worms. I don't think so. Anyway, yeah. No, it looks it very nice. Thank it's, you. It's very much your colour. Thanks. Um, <laughs> talking of, uh, talking of uh, dressing up, obviously last week was our Halloween 
week. Thank you very much to everybody who has said very nice things about it. We had great fun. Slightly disturbing, but it was great fun. It was really disturbing. Yes. I can't even look at the videos. No. A lot of people did say you you went to more effort. Mm. But I'm not shaving. I've not had a shave since... How much would we have to pay you to shave that all off? The last time I had a full shave was uh, in the castle. Yes, of course. And that's because it got too wild. Okay. So I did a wet shave. Yeah. I, my, I can't. How much for charity would I need to pay you to shave that off? I mean, I'd do it for charity. Okay. It'd how go much? back. How much? 100 quid. Done. You should have said that last week. Yeah, we should have said that last week. Well, maybe we'll dress them up again for Christmas. Mm. Yeah. I, do, maybe. I look so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could both dress up as producer Ben for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> But Halloween, so thank you very much to everyone for it all was those great lovely comments. That was lovely. Sorry if I was all over the place. No, I thought it was. I thought it was great. I thought it was. Some people are saying it's one of the best episodes we've done. Well, apparently, yes, which gives you a rough idea how good the rest of the episodes have been. Um, you also looked like Michael, Michael Fabricant, the MP. You know the yes. one with the wild hair. <laughs> yes, that's actually who you look like. Yes, a lot of people, people saying, saying that. Mm. Yeah. I also love the fact that when I showed, so we recorded that episode and then I had dinner with my cousin Anne and her husband Vince and I showed them the photograph of us switched and uh, and she looked at my jumper that you were wearing and she went, oh no, you'd never wear that sort of jumper. And I went, no, that, that, is, that, is, my jump, that is my jumper. So actually, yes, I would. I have worn that. Um, but yes, so I'm now never going to wear that You'd jumper again. You'd suit a bit of Hmm. Hmm. Could you grow a beard? No. Why? Because I've had laser hair. Yeah, but before that, could you have grown a beard? Mm, yes, but it was very dark. I've said this before. Far too dark compared yeah. to the blonde up here. Okay. It just looked a bit weird. It looked, it looked like I looked in the weekend release. If you go and watch our weekend release from last week on YouTube, that's, that's sort of what it used to look like. Okay. So I'm, I, know, I know what works for me. Um, so, as we've mentioned, two days to go until the book. Wow. Hasn't time flown? It's just... When when did we first sign? Was it last autumn? No, it was just before Christmas. Was that when? Oh yeah, and then God. we announced it in early February. Oh, and started writing it in January. That is mad. Yeah. Did we start writing it in January? We did, didn't we? We did. Yes. On Zoom. Yes. We'll talk all about this when we do our in conversation with events. I'm going to I'm going to get a few things off my chest. <laughs> like what? <laughs> no way. You have to wait. Well, Tease them, Jordan. I don't want you slagging me off in front of loads of people that have come to see us. No, I won't slag you off. Okay. Um, but yeah, it says here general excitement. So we <laughs> ooh, we are, no, we are dead, dead excited. We are. It's it's nice. Um, it's, I've given it to a few people already, the book, you know, some advanced copies. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's, it's people have said some very nice things already, which is nice. Um, you are, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right. I knew this was coming. <laughs> so it just so happens that the day our book's being released... Um, I'm also going on holiday. Well, the day after. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going on holiday. To Skegness. To Skegness again for the week. So uh, I'm... How long's the flight to Skegness? I'm, I'm going away. And I didn't know at the time. And you... Mm. I didn't know. I'd already had this booked. Pretty much came back last year and booked it again at the same time. Mm. So... And I just knew. I knew it was going to be that week. Do you think it'll affect sales? Well, we'll find out. Oh, God. No, I don't think it will. And actually, on that, we should just say... Um, producer Ben and I have ordered a cardboard cutout of Jordan North from Amazon. If that's not the most passive aggressive thing, I don't know what it is. I've not, I've not ordered it yet. Oh. But there's, because there's multiple options of which Jordan that we want, so we have to pick out which Jordan. Maybe we could put that on social. Yeah. There's one picture of me that was taken last year at the TV Choice Awards when I'd just got back from Skegness. Now that may, that was 10 days of an all inclusive. <laughs> Breakfast, dinner, tea, beers at eleven o'clock. So right. There's a there's the ch- you can see it on the chin. Z- <laughs> and the tan. So don't don't use that one. Don't use that one. Are we? These are on Amazon. Are it they? Took me, it took me weeks to shift that we way. We need to decide if we want life size or get a life desk size. size. Desk size. Yeah. <laughs> no, Not get an umpa lumpa. <laughs> get a desk size. <laughs> And if we uh, life size, if we order them on Amazon, will they arrive on time, or do they arrive fifteen minutes late as well? <laughs> that was actually really good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm quite bring proud that of that. Up with Amazon Music. Sorry. Bring that up with Amazon Music. Oh yeah, I will bring it up with Amazon Music, like your mum. But any- anyway, 
once we get the cardboard cutout, well, maybe I you could said, share. I said this ages ago. I was like, do you want me to cancel the holiday? And you're like, no, no, yeah, no, no. That, how we would be awful people telling you to cancel a holiday. You work so hard. So we wouldn't, that's, again, that sounds patronising. <laughs> it's not meant to be. But you do work hard. So you deserve a holiday. I'm only going away for a week. I know. That's yeah. fine. And then we've got our book events. And then we've got the book events and then we do, and we're doing loads of press and promo. Yeah. You know, this week. So it's fine. No, it is absolutely fine. And it enables us. You can have final... Maybe we give Jordan final sign-off on which one, which cardboard cutout we get. Producer Ben and I, keep your eye on our socials, everyone. We are going to tour some selected other cities around the UK to do some impromptu pop-up signings. Without me? Well, no, with with a cardboard cutout. (laughs) That's the point. That's the point. So come and have your photo taken with Ben, me and... I, I, kn- I knew this would happen. Every, every this is how. What do you want us to well, do? Well, no, it's not. It's just every time I go on holiday, there's always something. There's always something. What was it last time? It was the um, Radio One DJ hunt. Oh yes. Oh, oh yes. I do remember that. I was like, well, I'm on. I've booked an holiday that week. <laughs> and they're like, well, you have to do it from there. <laughs> well, it added a, a, a continental flavour to yeah, the DJ hunt, so that's fine. Um, so yes, that's that's good. So keep an eye out on your socials. Ben and I might be coming up to some some other places. One of them is my one of my favourite ever sitters, as well. What are you doing? Why didn't I know about this? Because you're on holiday. What are you doing? Book signings. Yeah, but sort of impromptu. Just turning up. Just just you know, turn up for forty five minutes, sign a few. Could we could sign two? We could sign twenty. I don't know. That's going to look bad on me though if you're there and I'm not. You will be there. Well, then I'm not. In it's... card form. <laughs> But you're going to do some in Skegness, yeah. aren't you? You are doing a book signing, a beach book signing in Skegness. But uh, I, you see, I've said this. You're going to get sandy flaps. Our book flaps <laughs> are going to just have elements, ele- you know, traces of sand. But I've said this. I never like post when I'm on holiday. Go on my Instagram stuff. I'm, I never post when I'm on holiday in that. No, which is probably why you have fewer followers. <laughs> Sorry, being such a bitch. <laughs> well, my social. Oh my God. Wow. I'm so sorry. I'm re- I'm actually I'm actually mortified. No, you're not. <laughs> no, I am. I'm but being unnecessarily. Post... I'm playing to the gallery. I'm so sorry. I don't post. I only post work or podcast stuff. Yes. Mm. I don't. I've never post like home or holidays. That's no. Private, isn't it? Well, maybe you should just post you in the book. All right. Because that, that is work. Yeah. Come on, you are going to be able to take the most glossy luxury photograph yeah, of our book like the beautiful blue skegness sea okay. the lovely yellow sand okay i think that'll be look, it'll look lovely right don't worry about it well i am worried about it um my parents have had uh, in other news my parents have had a complete disaster so as we know they they were in the bungalow this time last year they moved into the new house yeah that's had five different doors five different front doors uh, all the sort of the work is done, the garden's done. It's, you know, it's looking presentable. So they've decided to have a drinks party for neighbours. Oh. Which is lovely. Little cocktails and canapes. That's very middle class. On a Wednesday night. On a Wednesday on a, night? On a, in the words of my mother, I hope her friends don't listen, because then people will leave and they won't stay too long. Fair play. However, we don't know how many people are turning up because the invitations that they have sent out with the RSVP and they've put my mother's email address... It's not my mother's email address. They completely oh. got it wrong. Oh. They've sent it out with at hotmail.co.uk. And she's .com. No, she's a completely different email provider. So we tried to register Sarah at hotmail.co.uk. It's already taken, funnily enough. Darlings, I have messed up. But what I say is, whoever turns up, there'll be champagne, champagne all around for everybody, darling. I gave the wrong email address. It's, it's Brian's fault. He's useless, darlings. He's, he's useless. But I will be having the whole of Bristol to my house, darlings. They can come and they can see me. So anyway, she is, uh, she's slightly mortified. So they've had to go around all the houses again, giving additional information, going, I'm so sorry, I got the email address wrong. How many people are, co- are you going to it? No, no. No, I don't get invited because apparently I upset the guests. Really? Yeah, I intimidate He's very them. rude to my friends, darling. I'm not rude. He's rude and he doesn't drink champagne. <laughs> no, I don't. Well, actually, I've said this before. My, my actual mother, not your version of my mother, doesn't really like champagne. This is a lie. I love champagne. I bathe in the stuff, darling. <laughs> is James invited? Oh, yeah, James will probably James, be there. James yeah. is coming, of course. Guest yes. of honour. Whoopsie-woo! I'll be there. <laughs> 
Anyway, how's your By work? the way, you can yes. tell he's, he, he reminded me of me when I first moved to London. Oh, did he? He's on the piss every night. It was in his Instagram. <laughs> well, he, no, I was out with him that night, uh, yes. With, with the Guinness. The Guinness and the Silver Tank. Yeah, yeah. He is, he, James is he probably about the same age as me. I know he's a bit older when I moved. I was 28 when I moved to London. Yeah, he's 31. Um, but he, just looking at his Instagram, it reminds me of me when I first moved because you moved to London from somewhere like Burnley, where I was. Actually, mm. no, I was in Preston. And you're like, oh, my God, you can go out on a Wednesday night. Yeah. Pubs are, like, busy and stuff. Mm. So, and then does that stop? Yeah, because you, you see a picture of yourself that you tagged in, you think, oh, God, <laughs> I need to stop going out. So pits. do you have any advice to James or anyone else that's potentially No, moving? enjoy it whilst you can. Oh, okay. The novelty will wear off. Right. Yeah. When you're out till 2 in the morning on a Wednesday night. Yes. But it's fine because you think, I ain't got any work tomorrow, so. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's nice. How's your week been? Yeah, not too bad. Um, can't complain. What was... Um, we had got, a lot. Mm. I've got a busy weekend coming up. you got a busy weekend? Yeah. This is the, the life of a, a Radio 1 DJ. I'm um, cleaning out my wardrobe. <laughs> I'm getting curtains fitted. You're getting curtains fitted? Getting curtains fitted. And, um, Box pleat? Who? Helmet? <laughs> I don't know. Drawstring? I, I don't get involved. No. In I just, Curtain ties? I just sign the checks, don't I? Oh. <laughs> sign the checks? I Who? <laughs> um, <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> uh, got that coming up. What else am I doing? Um, there was another thing. Oh, I've got the oven cleaner. Your <laughs> oven. Oh, mine? Yeah. No. Did I give you their number? Yeah. Did I? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you did. I sent you photographs. I think you gave me the number as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, on that, everyone, I said last week the oven, co- oven cleaning cost £200. I don't know where I plucked that from. It was absolutely nowhere near it's that. About it was about 50 quid. Yes, well, I, 70 because I had some trays done as well. So, no, please don't think I spent £200 getting the oven cleaned. It was nowhere near that oh, expensive. You that? <laughs> Even though 50 quid's a lot. For, an, for a two hour job? Go, with toxic chemicals, yeah, I think play. I think fair play. Actually, what he charges is very reasonable. Yeah, fair enough. Well, you'll love your oven afterwards. Yeah. So I've got just I'm just having a chilled weekend before I go away. No, <laughs> no, yeah, take no, the weight off. Yeah. No drinking. Right. I'm having a sober sober weekend. Nice. Yeah. Even though I've got gin and the bonnet here. No, it's not. The, it's <laughs> not the weekend, <laughs> is it? No. Again, technically. Um, also, what to ask you? Yeah. What what being an etiquette expert and all. Mm. What is the best time to go and get a parcel that's been dropped off at neighbour's house? Mm. My oh. neighbours, yeah, yeah, came to mind this week, quarter to ten at night. Oh no, that's too late to pick up a parcel. I was doing my facial routine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, the one you taught me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that facial you taught me. Yes, how to do it? I still do it now. Good. I was doing my um, cleanser yes. and my serum mm. and my moisturiser. I said, oh, God, who's that? So I went down, my right. hair tied up. Seven flights. Um, dressing gown on. Yes. She's like, excuse me, has the parcel been dropped off? I was like, yeah, <laughs> it has actually, but it's quarter to ten at night. Yeah, no, I think that's too late. I would say not after eight, unless you have prearranged it. Funny you should say that, because we've had two parcels delivered to us for other neighbours. Not not sort of like because they were out, just because they're incompetent and can't read the label. And it does not even similar address anyway. So what I have then done, because of course they don't necessarily know that they've come to our flat. The, the, you might get a picture of proof of delivery, but mm-hmm. unless you know the door, you have no idea where that is. So I then go, and one of them was very, very heavy. So I thought, oh, well, I don't, respectfully, I'm not going to carry that down the entire street. It's not my fault it's here, but I will go and let them know. So I wrote a little card. And actually, as I'm about to say this, I've realised that I have become my parents. I wrote a little card and said, oh, hello, we have this parcel for you. It was um, for number 22, I thought. So I put this card through number 22, get home, and I realise it's for flat two number 22 but I put it in flat 22 number 22 so I had to then write another card go back and put it through their letterbox and go so sorry please ignore that card that was meant for flat 2 and put another one for, through flat 2 the stress in your life I don't know how you cope no I, I really don't but she came and collected it at 9.30 in the morning when oh. she, te- she texts me to say oh thank you very much when can I collect it so anytime because I always got told you should never call somebody after 9pm yes I would say between 8 and 8 is probably okay, okay. to collect Unless you have arranged mm, otherwise. 8am is pretty early. Really? Yeah. 
No, most people are out during the school run or something. Yeah, that's what I mean. Most people are out. Just don't come at quarter to ten. No, I would say quarter to ten at night is... Do you have a landline? No. No. God, no. Do you? Oh, yes. I love my landline. Do you have a landline? Yes. Who uses a landline? I use a landline. For our younger listeners, a landline <laughs> is... No, seriously. People don't know. Do you know 16-year-olds don't know what a floppy disk is? <laughs> Do you know what a well, floppy disk is? Well, we've got Charlotte in the studio. Charlotte's... Charlotte, do you know what a floppy disk is? No. no. Oh, my God. Charlotte's Williams... Lady in waiting. Lady in waiting. <laughs> She's Williams' what? friend's daughter. Yes. Yes. And Charlotte is 16 Charlotte. and doesn't know what a floppy disk See? is. Floppy. Do you know what a floppy disk is, Ben? I, Did no. you ever used to do your homework on a floppy disk? No. no. Homework on a floppy Even I didn't do homework on a floppy disk. So, Charlotte, do you know what a landline is? Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. So a landline is a phone that you plug into your house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good way of describing it. It is. <laughs> yes. But basically, though, because I need a new iPhone, I'm pretty much on the landline because it needs charging every freaking two hours. So it's like being on a landline. Right. It's plugged in all the time. Okay. But yeah, um, it's I don't... a much clearer quality. Who sound. brings you on that? I just think it'd be sales calls on a landline. No, I have lots of people phone me on my landline. Mm. Who? The Hampson residence, Lady of the House speaking, that routine. This is your mum ring down your landline? We speak landline to landline. Oh, wow. After six o'clock. Oh, and then, you, yeah, because it's free. Yeah. And then for an hour, and then just before, like five minutes before, you go, ring me back because they'll charge you down. Oh, we don't speak for that long. Oh. No. I can't believe you speak to your mum every day. No, no, every other day. If I'm available. <laughs> what? Well, it's good. It's better connected. Is, is your street thing yet? Go on. Yes, how's your street? Oh, shit on. <laughs> So honestly, they haven't. Kensington and Chelsea Council haven't come round to. Uh... I don't live at Kensington and Chelsea Council. Okay. Um, no, but I, that's. Oh, let me put that on my to-do list. Put it on your to-do list. Do you want my to-do list for this weekend? Do you want to see it? To do today. It's. it's uh, let me put that. You probably can't read out your to-do list at the moment. I suggest. No, I can. Okay. Right. Uh, can't call. Council. So this is this is my to do list to do this weekend. I've got work. But, yeah. Uh, Dom's stag do paintment. Oh yeah, your brother. Yeah. Lee Joanne video. Lee Joanne video. S yeah, I need to send my mum the book. Dom's and Kate as well. Okay. So they're not pre-ordered. Sort out wardrobe. No, they're not pre-ordered. I'm not charging my family. Sort out wardrobe. I'll charge your family. Um, I know you would. <laughs> Sexted photos. Those photos. We yes. Did. Oh. Yeah. We'll talk about that maybe in the weekend release. Uh, Zena email. I've done that. I've replied to Zena from Penguin Ranger Mouse. Sarah invoice. This is really boring. Get dad tickets for Liverpool Boxing Day. Call oven cleaner. iPad fixed. Mountain warehouse to get new running jacket. Make team brownies and call council. <laughs> Uh, where are the brownies for kicked, us? No, it's oh, don't use it. Kicked off because I met you know when I was on breakfast on Radio One last week. I met the team brownies to say thank you. So mm. now the going home team are oh, like, God. where's our brownies? So I'm gonna make them for Monday. And now I've got you saying where's the brownies? Can I say Jonathan and I, who I do the Keeping Up Appearances podcast with, we're on Scott Mills' show on Radio Two uh, tomorrow, <laughs> Wednesday. If you're listening to this at the time of release, and Scott's show now comes back from opposite where you are in mm -hmm. New Broadcasting House on the eighth floor. On the eighth floor. And I was parading Jonathan around or walking around and I felt like I was basically with my mistress and everyone at Radio 1 was like, who, who the heck's William with? Where's Jordan? It's because you were above a gunge tank. I was above a gunge but, tank. Um, I did feel like I was sort of parading my mistress around. Oh, OK. Yeah. Got a few funny looks. Jonathan's the great bit on the side. <laughs> Very much an upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we do uh, your etiquette etymology of the week before we do listeners' problems and questions? Yes. This week... Based on something that you said a few uh, weeks ago, we could talk about Earl Grey. Oh. And you said, you know, why is it called Earl Grey? Is it really posh? Let me guess, is it after some Earl? Well, that's what a lot of people think. But I'll tell you everything after these messages. OK, Gene Divas, thanks for sticking with us. It's now time for William's Etiquetimology of the Week. Why is Earl Grey called Earl Grey? Well, Earl Grey tea has been enjoyed since the 19th century. Um, and it's flavoured with bergamot, which is like a sort of a, a flowery spice thing. Uh, and it's very much seen as a posher tea. And it's associated with the second Earl Grey, who was the Prime Minister of Britain back in that time. Now, according to the Grey family, the tea was invented to taste good with hard water of that particular country house, um, Howick Hall, and became popular with Lady Grey, who was a sort of political hostess. And she began serving it at number 10. 
Wow. However, that is not actually true. <laughs> That's what they say. That's, that is what most people think. It's on the back of tea packaging. It's not true. Now, the first reference to tea flavoured with bergamot goes back to 1824. It's just before half past six. But as a way of passing off inferior tea as higher quality tea, um, that was why they added the bergamot. Um, so why would, let's be realistic about this, why would the Prime Minister of the day be associated with basically knock-off cheap tea? Um, so Earl Grey tea in itself was not seen before 1914. Earlier references, however, do exist to an Earl Grey mixture. Now, a company called Charlton & Co. offered Earl Grey mixture in 1884, but a few years earlier, in 1867, they were advertising the same tea as the celebrated Grey's mixture. So, did Earl Grey tea drink or invent Earl Grey tea? It seems unlikely. Basically, William Grey of Morpeth invented Grey's mixture, which was taken on by Charlton & Co., who added the Earl bit to basically sell it because it sounds more luxury. It's Earl marketing. Grey. It was marketing. So basically, a Mr. Grey, not Earl Grey, a Mr. Grey added Bergmont to his tea to make it sell. Someone else at Charlton & Co. added the Earl bits to make it seem posh. Earl Grey probably never even drank it. Great. It's still a very nice tea. What about Yorkshire tea? <laughs> Can you do one for that? Well, that's probably just it's, just, it's just a brand, isn't it? Or Yorkshire tea is the best. Or the Irish love Barry's tea, don't they? They do like ba oh, sorry. Barry's. It was more, one of his more successful businesses before the boot camp. <laughs> is it the same guy? No. <laughs> is it not? No. So it does Yorkshire tea. Someone told me Yorkshire tea is not actually made in Yorkshire. No, probably not. What? Well, you have to look on the back. Someone told me as well that Yorkshire puddings are actually Greek. No. Oh, oh right. No. I'll do this then. Right. Yeah. So find out Yorkshire pudding. Someone told me they originate from Greece. I'm still going to do wakes. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Add in some tumbleweed effect there. <laughs> so if Yorkshire tea and yes. Yorkshire puddings aren't from Yorkshire, then we need to find out where Sean Bean's really from. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> this is this is just this is just. Time traveling, weird shit going on here. Okay. If, this, if this comes out, the Yorkshire tea and Yorkshire puddings aren't even from Yorkshire. Are you actually from the north? Yeah. Yeah. I was technically, I was born in York. Born in York. Mm. So you're Yorkshire, not Lancashire. No, I'm not. I'm not. Well, you're born in York. No, I'm not. You're was, Yorkshire. No, my dad was in the army, so I get a pass. Okay. Because we moved around a lot. Okay. Um, now, before we go on to the listeners' questions, remember we're giving away two tickets to a recording of Help I Sext and My Boss in this studio in London. You could be in the room with me and Jordan. It's the first I've heard of it. What We've talked about this before. No. God, is this in the WhatsApp group? It's on email. Oh. I mean, great, but <laughs> first I'm hearing of it. Well, it's not. There's literally evidence. There's, you there's literally you reading out this <laughs> same <laughs> script. Who would want to come and watch us do this? Well, Anna and Charlotte. <laughs> oh, first. No, no offence, Anna and Charlotte. Oh, okay. What else? What do they have to do to enter, Jordan? Well, it says here, to enter the competition, you need to pre-order pre our upcoming book from Waterstones before 23.59 on Wednesday the 8th of November to be in a chance of winning. If you've already pre-ordered from Waterstones, you've already entered. Wow. But what you if they're working and stuff? Well, I think we'll, they can basically pick their recording they come to, I think. I mean, it's not sort of like you have to turn up on Tuesday or else. You also don't have to do it if you win. No, it's you... good. It's yeah. just first I'm hearing of it. Sexofmyboss.com forward slash Waterstones will take you where you need to go to pre-order your copy. And to help those of you who might live a bit further away, travel costs will also be covered up to £200. It's marvellous. Full terms and conditions can be found on the Waterstones website. Fantastic. So you can come here and we'll have to tidy up. Yeah. Well, yes, we will. It's a right mess sometimes, a studio. And then wires are a health and safety hazard. Look at them. I hope you turn those um, plugs off at night. <laughs> What's he going Look, look at all those. We've got people coming. You're going to do the pat testing for us? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get the pledge. You can Uber. Okay, nice. Mm. <gasps> no, I'll bring my vinegar spray. <laughs> vinegar. And the place will stink of vinegar. I love, you know I love my vinegar spray. Yes. Honestly, g and you've got to get it. It's called Star Drops <laughs> Vinegar Spray. It's, oh. just, it's just vinegar in a bottle. It makes your house sparkle. It's a luxury touch. It smells like a chip shop. It but does it's... Yeah, it smell like a chip shop, but it, you walk in, you're like, you can see your face. That's why, that's why I was late today. So I walked in the kitchen, I could see my reflection in my, in my, oh, I see. In my kitchen units. Off the marble work surfaces. Yes. 
Um, right, this uh, first letter is from... Excuse me. What? Shall we go to the listeners' problems and questions? Yes, Jordan, let's do that. This first one is from a dutiful listener and avid fan called Anna. Hi, boys. I'm an avid book reader and I absolutely love buying books, displaying them and keeping them almost pristine. Me too. But unfortunately, I also happen to be a people pleaser. Me too. And apparently am unable to say no when someone asks to borrow a book. No, I never borrow books. Okay. I never lend them out. I do, I do give them what I call my book borrowing rules. People try not to break the spine, fold the corners, or generally damage it. However, a few times people have given them back to me completely destroyed in a state that clearly says they didn't even listen to my book borrowing rules, and sometimes I don't get them back at all. Is there a way to make people more likely to look after your books? If someone has borrowed a book and hasn't made a move to give it back, how many times is it appropriate to ask for it back? And how long after them borrowing it should you admit defeat and buy yourself another copy? A dutiful listener and avid fan, Anna. Adam, my rule is I don't tend to lend out books for this reason. Is that because nobody wants to borrow Joey Barton's Mm -hmm. biography? That's a good one. I've got loads of books. Okay. I've got bloody... I've got everything from Joey Barton to... um, What's he called? (laughs) Not Dickens. Other one. Shakespeare? No. I could only get halfway through. It was doing me head in. (laughs) What were it called? Mel Grogovic made me get it. Mel Gedroich? Yeah. (laughs) What's he called? Oh, the Thackeray. Way, no, the way we live now. Thackeray. No. It's got a bug. I'm not Trollop. Really, yes, Trollop. Yeah. I only asked. So I've got, but um, I, I am very proud of my book collection. Yeah. But I have, what's she called? Anna. Anna, I have a little side of all, because sometimes I've got two copies of books. So I always say. Why? Because I, sometimes you get two lots of books. Right. You forget you've ordered it already. That kind of thing. Or you might move in with someone who's got the same book. That you know, Pot- yeah. mm-hmm. Potentially. So um, if someone says, can I borrow this? I go, no, but you can have this. It's a really good read. I did that with my mum. So when my mum came in the summer, yeah. she was like, oh, I've seen some books I want to take back with me. I was like, well, you can't take that. You can't take that. But here, I have that. I give her all the light we can see. Okay. All the light we cannot see, actually. Oh, that's she's, a book? She's blind. It's not the one we can't see. <laughs> 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 so it's all the light we cannot see because the girl with it's blind she can't see light okay um so i give her that and she loved it fantastic so that's my idea have a little section of copies i i have a friend george and he will when he's finished reading a book he will just send the book to the person he thinks will enjoy it that's really sweet yeah. um and say i i have i don't need this book anymore i've read it i don't need to read it again I think you would enjoy it. Mm. And if you enjoy it or you don't want it, pass it on again. Yeah. I think that's really nice. That's really sweet, but I do like to keep my books. So, yeah. Mm. Oh, you should see all my books I've got for Skegness. I'm so excited. I read, a, I get through, a good, I, can read, I can read a good book a day on holiday. Mm, depends. I'm, why would I take ours? I've written it. No, I said you should tell us. You could bring, tell us, write them down and then bring them in next week. You want me to do like a little book thing, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my agent keeps pestering me to do this on Instagram. Yeah, it's like you should talk about your books you read more. What we're we gonna do? Post a little review. Hashtag like bu- review. bookstagram. Right, right. I'm reading it at the moment. It's really good. Yeah. Michael Wolf's one on uh, the Murdoch Empire. Oh, oh it's, right. It's like reading Succession. Is it? Oh yes. Yeah, but real. But real. Yeah. Marvelous. There you go. Hope that helped. Um, you don't have any books on display at your house, do you? Yeah, in the study. Hmm. What? Yeah, you know, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, we've got, we've got the study. But not enough, not enough shelves. We need to move to get more Can more I suggest shelving. what you do in your study that I do in mine? Yes. Get a bed settee. No, we so hardly have people, room for books, yet alone a bed settee. So when people stay, you can pull out the bed settee. You don't have to make them stay in a hotel. If we ever move, we will turn one of the bedrooms into a study slash bedroom. Okay. But in the current flat, we do not have room for a bed settee or anything similar. Would you give advice to them? No, I don't think we really did give advice. Um, we so, did. We said just give them. Don't give out your good books. Well, how how um, it'll because if someone you never get it back. Pilks has still got my Alan Carr DVD, <laughs> and it annoys me. Yes, <laughs> Jack it does. Jack Deep Carr from Lower Sixth has still got my Phantom of the Opera DVD. There you go. Still annoys me. So yeah. I'm like, mm. um, not in touch with Jack Deep. Hello, if you're listening, but uh, don't think I haven't forgotten. Do you know who did that as well? <laughs> Yes. Our mutual friend, Steve Bajaya. Yes. Yeah, sorry, Adam, I'm messing with these again, sorry. Um, oh. <laughs> um, I, I, Adam, put the gun down. 
I, fine. I lent him Richard Bacon's book years ago. Okay. Really good book, that. And he gave it back, and I, I think he... Oh, he did give it back? Yeah, but I think he bathed it or something. It should, just, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll never forget that. Bathed, bathed it. it. Bathed it. Yeah. Gosh. Okay, well, now, I would say, I say, Annie, you just have to say, um, uh, you know, give how are you getting on with Richard Bacon's book? Yeah. Don't give me the finger. Pardon? I'm saying move on. Come on. I know what you're saying, and I'm giving advice to Anna. I'm self-producing. Come on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, but also a bit like money. Don't uh, don't lend anything that you don't want to see back. Are you taking pace? Come on, we've been talking about this for ten minutes. <clears throat> this next one is from E. Hi, William Jordan and EPB and Diego. I recently moved into a flat with a friend. We get along just fine, but it has become apparent since we've lived together that we have very different heating preferences. Oh God. She likes it cold while I like it warm. We've been trying different timings on the boiler to find a balance that suits both of us. Originally, it was set to come on for a few hours in the evening, but my flatmate found it too hot when she came home from work, so I moved the timing so it turns off before she gets back. It's also set to come on in the morning, and this is the one time that I really need it on as I have to be up at 7am most weekdays for lectures. Uh, several times now she has turned the thermostat off so it doesn't come on at all in the morning. I've asked her not to do this, but apparently it keeps happening. The whole situation is getting really frustrating for me as I'm desperately trying to find a compromise that works for us. I've used loads of blankets and a small electric heater in my room so it's not too hot for her. Don't use them. They take loads of lecky up. They cost you a fortune on lecky, and I learned the hard way at uni. Okay. But it feels like she's not cutting me the same level of compromise. Any advice on what I should do would be greatly appreciated. Many thanks. E. That's E, her name, not the energy rating. Okay. Um, it's a tough one because I, I, I Just don't... talk to each other. I... Find a compromise. Sit down. Right. I like it warm. Oh, I like it cold in instances. Some like it hot in the case of the flatmate. What are we going to do? Yeah. Put it in. Her, put the ball in her court. Sit down and, and see where the compromise is. Meet in the middle. Just talk to each other. But I, I'm like your housemate. I don't like the heating on. I, do, I only like it on for the towel rails in the morning. So you've got warm towels and mm. not soggy. Because I, 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 I don't think you need it on that much. Put a jumper days. on. If, if you're cold. It's not as cold as what it used to be in this country. Oh, here I, we go. No, I was watching that uh, Yorkshire Ripper drama. Right. And like, there's a scene in the morning where they're scraping ice off the car. And I said, you don't do that anymore, really, do you? you Maybe the odd day. Tell me if I'm wrong. That's the South. Yeah, but no. You, li you live in the South every, and you, presumably every, Yorkshire Ripper drama is set winter, in Yorkshire. In the winter, <laughs> my dad used to have to run the car. For a good 10 minutes, scrape it. He'd have a brew and then scrape the car with a scraper of de-ice and then go to work. You hardly do that. You, you might do the odd day. It's broken, uh, Britain. No, 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 I do have a car. You might do the odd day. I, I don't think you need the heating on all the time. But yeah, I don't mind the fire on in the living room. Yeah, maybe you could get a fire. Do not, yeah. do not use the electric heaters. They use loads on the electric. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would literally just talk and go, look, I like it cold you like it warm we both live in this house we both have an equal right we can't win all the time what shall we do just be sensible about it mm -hmm. don't be passive aggressive talk agree to a plan she said the app talk yeah but well, it's obviously not working review it after a week say like let's try this for this week and we'll review it next week some like it hot it, yes great film you've uh, never seen it uh, no but it was a musical on uh, broadway earlier yeah. this year uh, this is from K.S. Everyone's initials today. Dear William Jordan and EPB, at the beginning of the summer, I met my partner who has uh, added so much to my world. Oh. I can see where this is going. We're four and a half months into our relationship and neither of us has dropped the L-bomb yet. What's the L-bomb? Oh, love. Oh, they haven't said love. Oh. We talk openly about our future together after dealings with pretty shitty exes. Neither of us want wants to mess around, and things feel so right that I can't help but imagine a long and fulfilling life together. There have been numerous occasions where I have nearly dropped the L-bomb. I'm not afraid of saying it first, but I don't want to rush anything. We're competing in a fitness competition in November, which coincides with our first trip abroad together. I have in my head that this trip will be the perfect time. We will still have been together for over five months. We will have completed something monumental together and will be in a romantic city. To me, it seems like the perfect time. My questions are, when is the right time? Should I just say it? Does it need to be said at a special time when said for the first time? Your opinions would be greatly appreciated. Kind regards, KS. 
Chaos, I think that's the perfect way to do it when you go away. Um, you should, if you want to say it, say it. And I think just say it, don't plan it, but just say it when you're on holiday and think, do you know what I'm going to say today? Or I'm going to do it tomorrow. Or maybe when we're having a nice meal. Just kind of go with the flow on holiday, but definitely say it. Yes. And just say something like, you know, I love you, don't you? Oh. Yeah. I, I would say, Chaos, there is no right, that, like every relationship is different. There is no right time. If it feels right, say it. Yes, definitely. But on holiday is a perfect time to say it because then you'll always remember when you first said it. Yes, and hopefully you're relaxed. When did you first tell Mikey? Um, well, quite early on. But remember, we were, we didn't know each other for quite a period of time before that. So it wasn't a con- Who conventional... Who said it first? Do you know, I, you know, I knew you were going to ask me this and I actually can't remember. Get I feel, away. You know, I feel a bit bad. I'll ask him. I okay. will come back to you on that. I'll but text yeah, just him. say something like, you love. just wanted to say that, you know, I'm lo- I love you, don't you? Or, you know, I'm really in love with you. That's not. Oh, no, just say, I love you. Or you could say. Three it. words, I love you. That's don't, all it needs. No, I won't say it flippantly, like, oh, I love you. Just say it like, look, there's somewhat what to tell you. You know, I love you, don't you? Or I'm in love with you. Oh. Do you want to role play this? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> If I dressed up as you again, would you say it? No. Um, this is from Cameron. Dear William Jordan and... And then tell him every day. Yes. Every oh, to be day. fair, Mike and I say I love you numerous times You should today. say it every day. Yes. Even if you've had an argument. Oh, never go to bed on an argument. Well, that's a load of bollocks because... <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. It's, it's in theory you should never go to bed on an argument, but then wake up the next day and be like, sorry, I was being a dick last night, you know, I love you. You te- what, why are you texting them when they're next to you? Well, when you go to work. I'm just oh, talking from what people have told me. Anyway. Oh, I see. This is from Cameron. Dear William Jordan and P. Ben, I'm graduating at the start of December and will be going out to celebrate with my family and girlfriend. She is panicking because she doesn't know what to do in regards to paying the bill. She's wondering whether she sneaks up to the bar and pays the bill secretly, or if she puts her card down and fights with my dad to pay, or if she offers to give my dad money towards her share, or to just let my parents pay. What is the most polite thing to do in this circumstance? I I have told her that she does not need to pay at all and she has been invited and my parents are happy she is coming along. Also, the day of my graduation is a Saturday and I will miss going to watch my team play. Is it okay to keep tabs on the result during the graduation ceremony? Thanks, Cameron. Well, let's work backwards on that. No, focus on your graduation. i say yes, it's fine. No, focus. You have got one graduation, unless you do a Masters, and your team will be playing next yeah, week. Yeah, just keep an eye on it. You can keep an eye on it. Just don't be on your phone all the time. Stressful pressing that refresh button. Cameron, I would suggest you focus on your graduation. In answer to your girlfriend's dilemma, I would say if she has been invited, she doesn't need to pay, yeah. but she could offer to pay. Offer to pay, but for a graduation, like if your parents are getting it, then yeah. it'd probably make other people feel uncomfortable as well if she's paid, so just say. If you and your girlfriend had initiated the dinner mm-hmm. or the lunch, whatever it is, fair enough. But if your parents have said, right, let's all go out for dinner then I would suggest that they are at least paying or everyone's paying their own way. So I don't think you or your girlfriend need to pay for everyone. Yeah. It, 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 but she could certainly go, oh, no, are you sure? And then if there's situations where your parents are paying all the time, just every now and then your girlfriend could pay for one meal, mm. not usually, and they'll really appreciate that. Yes. But yeah, for something like a graduation, parents like would want to get the meal. They really would want to. And But what your girlfriend can do is send them a letter or text them afterwards mm. to say thank you very it much. It sounds like she's getting in her head a bit about this. Don't worry about this. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's absolutely fine. Dear William Jordan and EPB, this is the final one. I'd been seeing a girl casually for a few weeks and one night I went round to hers after a night out. We did the deed and both turned around to go to sleep. Just as I was falling asleep, I heard her get up and try and open the door. She was struggling a bit. I think the lock must have been jammed or something. I was just about to turn over and ask her if she was okay. But before I could, I heard what sounded like a waterfall. As I turned around, I was greeted by the sight of her squatting down and weeing into a cup. (laughs) It's safe to say this was the last time I went round to hers. Can William advise if this is correct etiquette if you need to go to the toilet, he means lavatory, and aren't able to go? Many thanks, Anonymous. First of all... No, it's not the correct etiquette. (laughs) Just wake them up. Sorry, I need to go to the loo. Could you please open the door? Simple as that. I mean, yeah. Why would you piss in a cup when... It's very odd. You've just started seeing someone. I used to wee in my sink at you. I know you did, and it's disgusting. <laughs> it was disgusting. I look back now and was like, that was disgusting. But my the toilet was like two flights up in, in my student Did you, did you have legs? 
Yeah, I used to bleach it afterwards and stuff. I would hope so. So bad. Doesn't bleach react with ammonia? Don't know, does it? Mm. Oh my god. I don't recommend doing that. Also, at home. what if you peed in a cup, surely you'd need a big... You then need to empty the cup, yeah, presumably. You can't leave the cup, cup behind. It'd be a big cup, wouldn't it? Well, I don't know. Depends. I got stuck on the motorway once, I had to pee in a bottle. Oh. It was horrible. Yeah, no, that's not nice. Um, anonymous, yeah, I, that's not correct etiquette. Why I've would just, she do that? I've just woken up. People are weird. I Why mean, if we've learned do... anything from this, and indeed some of the dilemmas in our book, people are weird. Why would you do that? Anyway, two days to go, everyone. Two days to go. Thank you, you to everyone who has pre-ordered the book. If you, if you haven't pre-ordered, it's sexwithmyboss.com forward slash book or get yourselves to Weatherspoon, not Weatherspoon. <laughs> I'm more Waterstones, you're, you're more Weatherspoons. Weatherspoons. Get yourselves to Waterstones, <laughs> get yourselves to BH Smith, Sainsbury's. Your local bookstore. Your local bookstore. What's the other supermarket? Asda. Got? Asda's. They're in there. Get, get the Go book. Go and buy it. It's out on Thursday. Get it. We hope you love it as much as we did. Enjoy it. Writing, writing it. it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much to everyone. And Jordan, we're just going to pick, could you just finally just pick the old cardboard cutout you want us to go with for Ben and my um, book to not a tour Where was that? shop thing? Oh. Maybe that one. I've what what my, are you wearing in it? Um, I've got chinos on and a, a John Motson coat. Well, whilst you do that, on our weekend release, we're going to be reading out a chunk of the House Parties chapter from our book, and we have some quick fire questions. As Maybe well. that one. That's not. You. <laughs> that's my. That's Michael Jordan. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think people might notice. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's Michael B. Jordan. Is that not the same as Michael Jordan? No, Michael Jordan was the basketball, basketball player. Oh, I thought Michael B. Jo- no, Michael B. Jordan's the actor. Oh. In, um, he's the boxer in Creed. He's a, he's a bloody brilliant actor. Tell you what, he's in one of my favourite films where they get flying powers. What's it called? Oh, it's fantastic. Before he was famous. Google it. It's an absolute... Mine and Pilkey's favorite, one of my favourite films. Okay, well, as always, remember you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Wednesdays and Fridays and share us on your socials all week. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sextedmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram. We're at sextedmyboss on all of the social platforms. Or you can write to William who promises a handwritten reply on our own letter to paper. Um... In the fullness of time, promises. Do you want to just read it properly? I'm picking my picture. I'll go for the brown one. Yeah. Or you can write to me. The address is on the website. Help. With the brown, or you can ru- the brown jacket. It says brackets. <laughs> or you can write to me. The address is on the website. Sectionmyboss.com. We'll see you for the weekend release on Friday. Excited for Thursday. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jordan. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.